Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna be doing an unboxing and I'm gonna give my first impressions on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. This is the follow-up to the original Galaxy Fold. It is on sale at the time of this video. You can find it on Samsung's website. I'll leave a link down in the description. The price is $2,000. This comes in two different colors. We have Mystic Bronze and the Mystic Black, which is what we have in front of us here. Samsung is pushing the Z branding here pretty hard to differentiate their foldables and their normal slab smartphones. We had it here first on the Z Flip and now here on the Z Fold 2. But let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and check out the Z Fold 2. Wow, very cool unboxing experience. It's definitely been a trend in 2020 to send these cool looking boxes out to tech reviewers especially, but this is a retail version, so this is exactly what you will receive. On top here, we have what is probably gonna be our paperwork. Yep, just the paperwork in addition to our SIM ejection tool. Then we have the device itself. Oh my goodness, it feels amazing already. Let's check out what else we get in the box. Again, we have our Galaxy Z Premier service. I already covered this in the Z Flip 5G video. They're basically gonna give you 24 seven support if you purchase one of these phones. And you're also gonna get a one-time screen replacement at a much less expensive cost. I think it's around $100 or so opposed to the five to $600 it would normally cost to replace the screen. It is nice that they offer that. Also in the box here, we have a 25 watt super fast charger. I am super happy this is coming to the Z Fold 2 in addition to pretty much every other Samsung product that's come out this year. We'll talk more on this later. And to go with that charger, we have a type C to type C charging cable. And that's actually gonna be it for everything included in the box with the Z Fold 2. Samsung definitely skimped out this year opposed to last year's Galaxy Fold. We got a case to go with the phone in addition to a pair of their truly wireless earbuds, the Galaxy Buds. Honestly, a great offering, especially at the $2,000 price point. Now we don't get any earbuds at all or any other accessories. But now let's go ahead and check out the Z Fold 2. So we have our care instructions on the front here. I'm not gonna read over all these. This is the same instruction messages that come on all of Samsung's foldable devices. It's basically just letting you know that it's not your standard glass slab of a smartphone, but overall in general day-to-day -day use, you really don't need to worry too much about the screen. Wow, so first impressions right out of the box in the packaging. This Mystic Black looks amazing. Looking at it side by side here with the original Galaxy Fold, it definitely has, again, just a much more refined and really nice looking aesthetic overall, just mainly because of that camera square. This is looking amazing and I haven't even folded it up or looked at the screen yet. I'm certain this will already be a fingerprinty mess, but let's go ahead and boot up the Z Fold 2. Let's take a quick look around the device. We have our volume rockers and our power button. This also has the fingerprint sensor built in. I love this, we'll talk more about that later. On the bottom, we have a speaker grill, mic, and type C port. On the left side, we mostly have nothing, but at the very bottom left here, we have our SIM card slot. On the top, we have another speaker and another mic. The outside of the phone has more of a matte finish to it, opposed to the glossy on the back. I like that new design and it has a nice feel to it as well. But now taking a first look at the inner display here, oh my goodness, this is huge. And man, the camera really doesn't do it justice, but looking at the original Fold and the new Z Fold 2 side by side here, there's definitely a screen difference. You might hear 7.3, 7.6. What's the difference there? Well, here it is. We we're losing that camera cutout, which I really didn't even mind this. A lot of reviewers were hating on this. We now have the hole punch design, but this is pretty much as full screen as you can possibly get. We have a lot more uniform and slimmed down bezels. There is also an included screen protector on this Z Fold 2 but I'm probably going to remove it. I removed it on my other foldable phones just because it makes for a lot more fingerprints and just not as nice of an experience in my opinion. But after using these other foldables for essentially a year now, I have zero scratches on the inner displays, no issues at all in terms of durability. So for me personally, I feel comfortable with taking off the screen protector. For you personally, it's up to you. Make your own choice on whether or not you want to do that. While we still have the phone off here, we can take a look at that crease in the middle of the phone. 
I feel like this shows up very prominently on all the videos that I watch, but if you're using this in person and you're looking directly at the phone and you're looking at some sort of media or something, you are never going to see that crease. You only see it when you begin to look at it at an angle, then you will always see it, you'll always notice it. So that's why people always mention the crease because they're seeing it at different angles than you straight on. But I will say initially here, just running my finger over it, it feels like the crease is less prominent as on the original Galaxy Fold. It's not really a major difference, but I will say the crease is less evident and you don't feel it as much here on the Z Fold 2. Now let's go ahead and fold for the first time. Wow, that is a very different folding experience than the original Fold. There is a lot more resistance when you're opening and closing this phone. And the reason for this added resistance is so that you can use this phone in many different ways. Like you can have it folded in half here, have a little mini laptop. This is something that Samsung pushes a lot with their flex mode. I've yet to see if it really is that useful or beneficial, but really the biggest thing is that hinge is gonna be all the more refined. It definitely feels so much smoother when you're opening and closing. I'm definitely gonna have to get used to that resistance. I'm not used to having that much because on the original fold, opening it up, it is pretty instantaneous. And then also closing, it's just super fast. It closes up really easily, but you're not getting that flex mode. You're not getting that ability to just prop it up like this. You can see here that it's just, it almost seems kind of flimsy, even though it's a very sturdy device and the hinge just makes more noise. We still have a gap here on the Z Fold 2 and folded. You can actually see through the phone if you look at it at the right angle, but something you'll definitely notice right away is that it is a lot wider than the original Fold. It's gonna make that front display all the better of an experience. But really the biggest takeaway for me personally when it's folded up is that when you press down on the Z Fold 2, it's not making any noises at all. It's completely silent. Whereas here on the original Fold, if you're tapping or using any part of this front screen, the inside of the screen on both sides is hitting each other and it just makes a little bit of a sticky kind of noise. So that just honestly drove me nuts on this phone, but on the Fold 2 here, we don't have that anymore. And wow, this is actually one of the biggest differences between these two phones here. It's not even comparable at this point. The display here on the Z Fold 2 is much larger. So with that initial tour out of the way of the new Z Fold 2, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up, put my information in, put my SIM card in it, and then we'll check out some more things here on the newest $2,000 phone from Samsung. All right, so I've been using the Z Fold 2 for a couple of hours now, and I gotta tell you guys, I'm loving this phone, and I wanna tell you and explain to you why I'm loving this phone so much more than the original Fold and also just a couple concerns that I do have. But first, let's talk about everything I'm loving about the phone, starting with simply unlocking the phone. I am loving the fingerprint sensor on the side here, baked into the power button. It is so quick to get into your phone. Every time it's gonna unlock, guaranteed, and it's instantaneous. It's just the second I lay my thumb on, it is unlocking right away, super nice. And I'm just honestly getting a better experience here than I am in the in-display fingerprint reader on the Note 20 Ultra. And it just doesn't seem as fast and it doesn't always work every single time. If there's a little bit of water on my finger, I'm a little sweaty, doesn't seem to unlock 100% of the time. This is exactly what I want out of unlocking a phone instant access, instantly getting into whatever you need to do. Next, I wanna quickly talk about the screen sizes again and the sizes of the phones in general, of the Z Fold 2 and the Fold. On the home screen here, you can see that you're getting a whole nother column of apps. And this also extends to the inner display where I'm getting six apps across opposed to the five apps across. You can notice this even more when I swipe over to my next page here. You can see that this has filled up the entire screen but on the Z Fold 2 here, I have a whole nother column of applications. I can stretch out my widgets further. It is crazy how much the screen size really increased here on the Fold 2. It makes the original Fold look small in comparison, which before this thing was even out, this was a humongous screen. This was massive. And now it honestly looks like a cute little screen in comparison 
side by side here with the fold too. It's crazy that I'm even saying that and thinking that, but it didn't get too much bigger, which is good because it still fits in one hand. You can still hold this with one hand, which I really like and really appreciate. It's nice that I can get a good grip on it. I'm not worried about this dropping on my face while I'm watching YouTube in bed or something. In terms of audio and sound quality on the Z Fold 2, the audio has definitely improved here and it's just amazing how loud this phone gets. It's honestly louder than some laptops I've recently used. You're definitely not going to be disappointed at all in the audio department. So now looking at the Z Fold 2 exclusively and starting with the front display, this is a perfectly sized screen in my opinion for the outer display. And I know a lot of reviewers were complaining about too small of a keyboard and you can't really type on it still. And that's because Samsung by default, the keyboard is very small on here on the front facing display. But I did find if you go into settings here and go to keyboard size, you can stretch out this keyboard to not double the size, but it does make it significantly bigger. And you're of course not getting any wider of a keyboard, but it makes it much taller. And in my initial testing here, it makes it so much easier to type on this outer display. So first impressions of the outer display, no issues at all here. You can still enjoy some content actually if you just wanted to quickly view something. So I'll show a little bit of B-roll of that here. But overall, the front facing display, this is a huge upgrade. I'm loving this. Another thing that I am surprisingly loving here on the Z Fold 2 are the cameras. Now, obviously the cameras are not nearly as specced out as they are on the Note 20 Ultra. And there's been a lot of talk of why didn't they just put that camera module on here? But honestly, this has everything you need. You have your primary lens, you have a two times optical zoom, and you have a wide angle lens. And it's not just the physical cameras and the megapixels and all that itself that I'm excited about. I'm more so excited about the functionality of this camera and just the added features of having a display in here and also having an outer display. So you've probably seen this on other reviews at this point, but up in the upper left corner here, you can tap on. And now on the other side, you're seeing what you're going to be taking a picture of, what you're going to be shooting a video of. I think this is so cool. I'm definitely going to be using this feature. It's just so nice that if you are taking a picture of a group of people or something, they can see themselves in the frame here or in the shot. In addition to having that new flex mode, that you're able to look at your previously taken pictures or videos so that in real time you can see, oh, did I get a good shot of that or not? I'm not sure. Or if you would take a photo and you see, oh, actually I don't like that very much. Let me try and take that again. And you can just quickly switch to and from that mode. And then also just the fact that you can put this into flex mode even further and then just lay this on a table. It's gonna be easier to record things at a tabletop. I just think it's gonna have so much more versatility. I normally use an iPhone for filming of all my YouTube videos and such, but this added functionality, I think I'm actually going to start using this Z Fold 2 for my filming and video making here on this YouTube channel. Next, I wanna quickly talk about gaming. So gaming on the Z Fold 2 is gonna be huge, literally. With cloud gaming especially, it's gonna be so easy to just pop any game you want on this humongous display. But in this video here, I just wanted to quickly show you that this phone is still gonna fit in my standard little cheap Android smartphone gaming controller. And I just love this as a gaming setup. This game is Stardew Valley. This is a game that I play on pretty much all of my smartphones and all my unboxing videos. But this just takes the cake obviously with the latest Snapdragon processor and just the AMOLED display, 120 Hertz. You're getting your speaker grills unobstructed. So you're getting all your volume here. You still have easy access to your volume controls here. And honestly, for me, this is pretty much peak status for gaming on a mobile device. This is going to be an amazing phone for gaming. But with all that gaming and all that heavy use, of course, you're gonna take a major hit to your battery life. So that is my initial concern here with the Z Fold 2. How is this battery going to hold up? I've lost a significant chunk of the battery already, but with those initial battery concerns, that is the reason why I am so happy this now has 25 watt super fast charging. That's the one thing I've been bummed about in general on these folding phones up to this point. The Z Flip, even the Z Flip 5G, and the original Fold is that they only are capable of 15 watt fast charging, which yes, is pretty fast. But this super fast charging is pretty much in my testing twice as fast of charging speeds. I'm super happy that it's here on the fold so that if you're running out of battery quickly, you can charge it back up quickly. Another general concern I have is portability. This has still been an issue with my original fold. Am I going to want to take this with me everywhere I go? I've mostly been daily driving this Z Flip here. This has been my primary phone just because I love how portable it is. It's so easy to just grab and go. 
have it in the palm of your hand if you don't want to throw it in your pocket. And if it is in your pocket, there's absolutely no chance of this guy falling out. And if I'm just going to run a quick errand or something, or if I'm going to do something where I know I won't really need my phone for that particular event or whatever I'm doing, I always don't feel like lugging around this Z Fold 2. I just want to grab the Z Flip. It has all the features and functionalities of a good smartphone that I might need on the go. So this is really what I'm taking with me wherever I go still at this point. So I'll definitely have to follow up with you guys if I am actually taking this phone out with me a lot or not. And then lastly is pricing. Of course, it is a $2,000 phone. I feel like it's gonna be pretty clear cut who is getting this phone. If you can afford this phone, you're getting it. If you can't afford this phone, you're not getting it. Once this Fold 2 has a price tag of $1,000, I think a lot more people are gonna be interested in foldables in general. But with all that said, overall, first impressions of the Z Fold 2 5G, I'm super impressed with this device if you couldn't tell already. But what are your thoughts on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the Shane Simons YouTube channel today and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss the next video. I hope to see you guys around for the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.